Unfolding the eternal excellences, the hidden insights of the truth and the depth of the riches of wisdom and knowledge. The Bible says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have not pointed to your weaknesses. He says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have pointed to your strength. And this is your strength, that I am Christ in you, the hope of glory. The glory of freedom, the glimpses into eternity. The gospel is not supposed to be an assumption. It's not supposed to be just a mere presupposition. Truth is older than language, but the word of God is way deeper than any human language. And now, Apostle Grace with the word. Let me begin this way. There is a way people live in the life of men, as there is a way people live in the life of the Spirit. Although the Bible tells us that the things which are seen are not brought about by things which do appear. So we know for a fact that the way our life pans out is as a result of what is happening in a realm that we are not able to see and touch with our physical hands but is of heavy consequences. Praise God. And because of that, regardless of whether we are talking spiritual or physical, we all dream of a certain expected end. At the end of our lives will be success, will be victory, will be breakthrough, will be healing or divine health, will be whatever God has spelled out for us to have according to his word. Like I've shared before once in a sermon, that the way of life is supposed to be from one level of glory to another level of glory, from one level of faith to another level of faith. From one level of victory to another level of victory. From one level of breakthrough to another level of breakthrough. That's how the life of men is supposed to be. You are supposed to come from darkness getting into light. From weakness getting into strength. From beginning getting into end. From turmoil getting into victory. That's just the way of life. Should be the way of life. And fortunately, we cannot say that that happens for all men. But for the believer especially, it should be so. The path of the just shines brighter and brighter. And to a perfect day. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And so because of that, I believe this for you. That you'll get better and better and better and better and better. If you believe it, shout amen. It's supposed to be so. That's just your way. Hallelujah. That's regardless of your past. That's regardless of your family history and the diseases in your family. That is regardless of the people who know you or those that don't know you. That is regardless of those which will favor you and those which will be against you. That is regardless of the seasons of life. That is regardless of the elements of the earth. That is regardless of the days and the years that will come. Regardless of whatever is set ahead of your life. You must believe God that your day will become brighter because you're a child of the day. But that's just the way of life, from darkness to light, from small to big, isn't it? But that's not the way of the word. That's not the way of the word. You see, the word has a journey with you in that progression. But that's not the way of the word. Hallelujah. That's not the way of the word. And likewise, because we are children of the word, the Bible says we're begotten of the incorruptible seed, which is the word of God. In spite of the fact that our lives will come from darkness to light, from evening to morning, you see, from small to big, The word that we profess, the word that we have submitted ourselves to and we will apply into our lives does not walk that course. You see that? It does not walk that course. And that paradox sometimes is a confusion in the lives of men. And because of that, some people pray the wrong way. Some people confess the word the wrong way. Some people have a wrong vision of life because they don't see it from the perspective of the word or that they allude that the way of life from small to big also seems to be the pattern of the word and the way of the spirit and that is not so that is not so 
And that is why we don't receive results when we pray because we pray amiss. We pray amiss. I want to show you the right way to pray. I want to show you the right way to apply yourself in the way of God, in the Word. Because if you learn that, you'll be sure that you'll have the results that God so professes for your life. Shout Amen. The disciples of our Lord Jesus Christ come to him and say, you know what? We don't know how to pray. It's important for us to learn to pray. And that teaching is also another one. I have many prayer cards on that teaching upon teaching concerning how we ought to pray. Because again, if God says we ask and receive not because we ask a miss or we pray a miss, we don't know how to pray the right way. In fact, if I will add, one day I'll take the opportunity to help us understand that sometimes even we receive not because we don't ask in the first place. Do you know how many people have not really asked? Either from the perspective of not actually asked for something or from the perspective of they don't even know how to ask. See, it's one thing to ask a miss. It's another not to even ask in the first place. Have you really asked God for the job you want? Or you've just asked for a job? Have you really asked God for the ministry you want or you've just asked for a ministry? Oh, give me a good ministry. Have you been specific? I'll teach about that one day. So the disciples want to learn to pray. How should we pray? If we go to the gospel of Matthew, the sixth chapter, the ninth verse, if you will read from the amplified version, he says, pray therefore like this. He's telling them the right way to pray. And he says, our Father, who is in heaven, hallowed or kept holy be your name. And verse 10, what I want to underline and emphasize on mostly today, your kingdom come, comma, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So when we're talking about the realm of God and how the realm of God works, the will of God is done on the earth as it is done in heaven. In other words, the pattern of prayer should be connecting firstly from that which is in heaven and then relating with that which is on the earth. Does somebody understand that? You don't begin from your experiences of the earth to pray to the Father. You begin from the experiences and realities of the heavenlies to pray to the Father. In fact, there's a version that says, Your will be done on earth as it has been done already in heaven. You see that? As it has been done in heaven. Or as it's prayer done in heaven. The realm of God, the word their kingdom is realm. The realm of God works in that pattern. You firstly connect to the things that are done in the heavenlies and then you come to the things of the earth. You see, if you do not have a heavenly testimony, if you don't have a witness of what is happening in the heavenlies, then you do not have a foundation or setting for you to move things concerning God on the earth. That's just the way of God. The heavens were made prior to the earth. Isn't it? They were created prior to the earth. And so his will is done on the earth as it is in heaven. What do you know about heaven? What do you know about the word of God? You see, the Bible says in Psalms 11989, it says, that, O oh Lord, thy word is settled in the heavens. He did not say it's settled on the earth. He says, your word is settled in the heavens. So for the earth, it's for manifestation. But the settling is in heaven. In fact, the Hebrew word there for settled is also translated as stationed in heaven. Your word is stationed in heaven. It also means appointed. Your word is appointed in heaven. The appointed things concerning God are appointed in the heavenlies, not the earth. Somebody shout hallelujah. That word also means sharpened. Your word is sharpened in heaven. 
It's sharpened in heaven. So we say when the word of God is sharper than a double-edged sword, the sharpening is a heavenly experience. You see that? The Hebrew word also means, and I love this, your word is in its best state in heaven. It's in its best state in heaven. It does not mean that when it comes on the earth, it's inferior. It only means that it changes function when it comes on the earth because on the earth, it's for the manifestation. Somebody shout hallelujah. The prophet Isaiah saw this. And he saw how men think and how God thinks. And then he sought to give us that reconciliation of this life. Get this thing, it will change your life. In Isaiah, the 55th chapter, the 8th verse. Now this is God speaking. He says, for my thoughts are not your thoughts. I don't think from where you think from. I don't see life the way you see it. He says, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither your ways, my ways, said the Lord. Now listen, for as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. Now, it is giving us an allegory between the earthly and the heavenly. And he continues. Now, listen. Listen to the part of the word. He says, for as the rain cometh down. Are you hearing? For as the rain cometh down and the snow from heaven and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth and maketh it to bring forth and bud that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be. That's just how my word works. Hallelujah, somebody. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. He says, and it shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing where I sent it into. From where did he send it? From the heavenlies. You see that? Not from the earthly. From the heavenlies. It doesn't matter how many words you speak concerning God. If you're not connected from a heavenly perspective, if you're not connected from a heavenly vision, if you're not connected from the precision of heaven, then you don't know how to apply the word of God. He says every word that comes on the earth is a word that comes from the heavenlies and comes like the rain falls, like the snow falls and water at the earth. So is my word. It is settled in heaven. It is stationed in heaven. It is established in heaven. The other word also. It's appointed in heaven. It's best at its state in heaven. And it's from where it hails and comes on the earth and does what must be done. And it cannot come back up to me before it achieves or accomplishes that which I send it out to achieve. And he says, and that's the way it prospers in the thing that I send it. That's the way it prospers in the heart of the man that hears it. That's the way it prospers in the body of the sickly man. That's the way it prospers in the business of that woman. That's the way it prospers in the career. That's the way it prospers in the ministry. It comes from heaven down. Somebody shout hallelujah. That is why when he takes the form of bread, he is the bread that came from heaven. Somebody shout hallelujah. He is the bread that came from heaven. He's the bread that came from heaven. He says, I am that bread of life that came down from heaven. I did not hail from the earth. I did not begin my revelation from the earth. I connected from the things that come from heaven, that are of heaven, that are with the heavenly testimony. And then I came to give men life that they might not die. That they might not die. The right use of the word of God begins with how you behave yourself in the things concerning heaven. You must know how the heavenlies work. You must be connected to where the word comes from and how it comes. And he continues to say in Isaiah in verses 12 he says, for ye shall go out with joy because the word came that way. He says, for ye shall go out with joy and be led forth with peace. He says, the mountains and the hills shall break forth before you into singing, and the trees of the fields shall clap their hands. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Talk about the fields of the trees 
I hope some of you who read the Bible understand what that means. Because in the most physical sense, how do they clap? The trees of the field. How the trees of the field clap? He's talking about the harvest. People. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. He's talking about people, right? People celebrate what's happening on your life. And he says, instead of the thorn shall come up the fear tree, and instead of the barrier shall come up the middle tree, and it shall be to the Lord for a name for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. Wow. Instead of the thorn shall come the fear tree. You remember that when Jesus Christ is crucified, they put on him a crown of thorns. You remember that? And in the bleedings of the Christ, okay, the lashes were for our sicknesses. But the sweating of the brow, remember when the man in the beginning was cast, he says that out of the sweat of your brow, the Bible says thou shall what? Eat. From the sweat of your brow, he's telling Adam, from the sweat of your brow, you shall eat all, because the ground is full of sorrow. You see that? And so the same master, a crown of thorns is made, and his forehead, his brow is pricked. So he shed blood for you not to struggle to eat. You see that? And because the man has understood the word in Isaiah, he said, instead of the thorn shall the fig tree come. Not the thorn. Not the thorn. He's saying you will never struggle to eat. Somebody shout hallelujah. You will never struggle for finances. Oh yeah, some people say, you know, hard work, I worked hard. And look at my hands, they're all rugged and rough. Look at my legs, they can't even walk anymore because I was working hard. There are people who are driving very nice cars, but if you look at their backs, they're all broken because of hard work. That is not your testimony. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The Bible says you shall eat it that way. It shall come easy. It should come easy. You'll make wealth easy. What does that mean? It means you'll work little and get much. Oh, what if you work much, then you get much more. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Glory to God. So when the Bible says that the worker is worthy of their pay, some people think that God means to say that what you have worked is exactly what you will earn. That's not the way of the spirit. You have houses you did not build. You have vineyards you did not plant. How does that come? You see, here when we're talking about the worker, we're talking about the man who has learned to apply himself to truth. Somebody shout hallelujah. To revelation. That's what we're talking about. We're not just talking about this hard labor, manual labor. We're talking about the working of yourself into revelation. Somebody shout hallelujah. The doer of the word in the mighty name of Jesus. But you see how it says, my word is like that, that goeth forth. It comes from up and then comes down. That's just the way of God. You see that? Matthew 18, 18. You all know that. If you read it from the KJV, it says, Verily, verily, I say unto you that whatsoever you shall bind on the earth, it shall be bound in heaven. Listen. And whatsoever you shall lose on the earth, it shall be loosed in heaven. And that's where the confusion comes from. Because he said that the word comes from the heavenlies and then comes down on the earth. But here Matthew is telling us that whatever we bind on the earth, it shall be bound in heaven. Whatever we lose on the earth, it shall be loosened in heaven. It's as though that there is a pivot that carries its axis from the earthly realm. And that's a contradiction. But only because the transition of this interpretation was not clearly understood. That is why when you go deeply into studying the Hebrew there and then you go to the Amplified Version, the Amplified Version says it accurately. It says, truly I tell you, whatever you forbid and declare to be improper and unlawful on the earth, listen to the Amplified, must be what is already forbidden in heaven. You see that? And whatever you permit and declare proper and lawful on the earth must be what is already permitted in heaven. You see, where does it begin from? It begins with what has been done in the heavenly. Somebody shout amen. That is why Paul says that our conversations are in heaven. Or they are all of heaven. Philippians 3.20. He says, for our conversation is in heaven. He says, from whence we also look for our Savior, the Lord Jesus. Our conversation does not begin from here. Our conversation begins from up there. You need to know how to be up there. You need to know how to be up there. 
Somebody shout amen. amen. Glory to God. Colossians, the third chapter, from the first verse. Let's read the amplified version. He says, If you have been raised with Christ to a new life, to a new life, to a new life, praise God, to a new life, thus sharing his resurrection from the dead. If you are born to a new life, he says, aim and seek the rich, listen, eternal treasures that are above, not on the earth, that are above, not on the earth. Aim and seek for the rich and eternal treasures that are above where Christ is and is seated at the right hand of God. And the next verse says, and set your minds, listen, and keep them set. Set them and keep them set. Who is understanding what I'm saying? Set your minds and keep them set on what is above the higher things, not on the things that are on the earth. Set it and keep it set. Set your mind and keep it set. I say that again. Set your minds and keep them set on what is above the higher things, not the things that are on the earth. Because that's where the word is. That's where the word is. That is why when you study the Hebrew language, when God starts to communicate to man, you realize that the Hebrew language does not have time frames. Some things are spoken in the past, some things are spoken in the present, and some things allude to a future. And yet the future and the present and the past are the same. You see? That is why they don't have future tenses. They can place a statement of the future as though it's present or past. You see? Behold, he says he was wounded for our transgressions. Was he yet wounded? No. But Isaiah uses that language. Was he yet bruised? No. But in Isaiah 53, the account of the Lord is as though it had already taken place. Because to God, present, future, tomorrow, they're the same. I preach about that. But let me show you something here. If then, our mind is supposed to be set and kept on things above. If then we are to begin from above and then come on the earth. If then we are to begin from the things that are unseen to the things that are seen. If then the word of God comes from above as rain to the earth and the snow that comes up to down. If then he is the bread of life that comes from heaven. If then everything hails from the heavenlies. If then our conversations are from the heavenlies. If then our Lord Jesus is seated in the heavenlies and we are seated with him in the heavenlies, then we must understand that the way of the spirit, the way of the word, hails from the perfect things to come and deal with the imperfect. The life of man comes from the imperfect to the perfect. The life of God comes from the perfection of things to come and deal with the imperfect. So you begin from the perfection of things, if you understand what I mean, even in prayer, even in applying the word, you begin from perfection to deal with the imperfections. Are you hearing me? The way of life begins with imperfections to become perfect. You see, I am weak, so I become strong. When you get to the perfection of things, you begin from strength to come and deal with your weakness. Who has understood what I just said? The way of life is I'm unholy and so I'm trying to live a holy life. It's ascending. Okay? The way of the word, you are holy. And so you start to deal with all unholiness in your life. Somebody shout hallelujah. The way of life is ascending from lower realms of glory into higher realms of glory. The way of perfection begins from this most glorious created in its most glorious sense and then it comes to deal with every inferior level of its life ascending in the way of life into the glorious life but yet beginning from the glorious life to come for the inferior life to change it who has understood what i just said let me make it simpler are there lame men in heaven are there sick people in heaven 
Is there poverty in heaven? Is there weakness in heaven? Is there death in heaven? Everything perfect is there. That's where the word of God begins. Who has understood what I just said? That's where truth begins. It begins from this side. Are you hearing me? Your vision should not begin from here. Your vision should not begin from here. In fact, I'm starting to repent of some songs. Let the poor say, I am rich. We repent, Lord. <laughs> For we know the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That's what the word that comes from heaven says. He says, for though he was rich, but for your sex he became what? Poor, that through his poverty he might become rich. Now, from the heavenlies you set out in wealth, and then you come and deal with the man of the earth to make sure that you align him into the wealth that you already have in Christ. That's just the way of the spirit. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter whether it's stage 4 cancer or it's HIV, it's incurable. The doctor said you're going to die. Look at how your heavenly body should appear. Hallelujah. Does your heavenly body appear in sickness? Does your heavenly body appear in weakness? Does it appear in pain? No. Begin from there. Are you hearing me? And then come to the man of the body and tell him, I refuse to be sick. I don't care what the doctors have said or what I'm feeling. My conversations are from from there, I set my mind and I keep it set in the man that is of heaven. When you begin from there and then come back for the inferior life of the earth, people will see this life coming from darkness to light, from weakness to strength. But you did not begin from there. That is why when we understand this message, even the thought of remember where you come from. It's going to change. Some of you, when you look at what God has done for you, you look back from where you began from in that poor shack, in that little house when everybody was poor and things were not working out right, and then you start crying and say, the Lord has brought me from far. You who? I remember how poor I was. I remember those days I lacked food. I remember those days I didn't have clothes. I remember those days I didn't have nothing. You who? The man of the flesh? Or the man of the spirit. The man of the spirit, the born again man, didn't begin from there. In fact, we have to get to a point of crying. Because we remember how much wealth is with us. Yeah. Somebody shout hallelujah. Yeah. Those pains of past losses and past troubles. Oh, I came from a poor family. Oh, when you become born again, you become a new creation. Behold, the old is past and now the new. And all things are become of God. He has connected you to his life. He has owned you and possessed you by his name. He's saying never ever ever think of where you come from and then you think of your village and then you think of that little house. No. No, 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 no. Begin from where your salvation story is. When you look from where you're coming from the real vision, you will feel like you need to do more here. Somebody shout hallelujah. That is why Jesus didn't belong to your past. He belongs to your future. Paul says, forgetting the things that are behind me and setting my mind ahead where Christ is. He's saying, I'm still leading you. I'm here. Hey, 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 hey. Leave your past. Hey, 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 hey. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know, I know. I know you messed up. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know, I know. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. We know that. But reach out to the things that are before thee where Christ really is. He's not behind, no. He's ahead of you. He has set his life ahead of you. You understand what I'm saying? He is the one telling you, stop looking at what didn't work. Stop considering what happened last week and last year. Stop considering what happened. Oh, you know, I messed up in 1992 or 1993. And you know, the consequence of that, I got this disease. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. But where are we? Where are we? Oh, I lost a lot of money, but where are you now? Where is Jesus? Is he still there? Did Jesus get stuck there? Did he stay where you stayed? No. He moved on. He even forgot it. Are you hearing me? But you're here scratching your head over things that are not going to come back. And God is just ahead of you telling you, come, 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 come. In fact, in Isaiah, the Bible says that voice that speaks behind you, it tells you, go that way. It doesn't tell you, look back. Somebody shout hallelujah. If it should come behind your ear, uh -uh, it tells you, move ahead. Go that way. 
the direction sets up and forward. It's forward. I want you to tell your neighbor forward and forward only. Say it. Say it again and say forward and forward only. Say my life is going forward and forward only. My health is going forward and forward only. My peace is going forward and forward only. My finances are moving forward and forward only. In the mighty name of Jesus, my family is advancing forward and forward only. No regression, only progression. That's my testimony and that's my life because he sends his word in Jacob and it lights the whole of Israel. Somebody shout hallelujah. Glory to God. The Bible says it hath lit upon Israel. It hath lit. It hath lit. So where do you begin from? Where do you really begin from? When you read the word, when you are going through issues and you need to consult the word, where do you consult from? Do you consult from the earthly? Because if you do, you're going to start saying, oh God, prosper me. That's a wrong prayer. That's a wrong prayer. If you say that his word shall prosper in the thing that he sends it into, and then you're asking God to prosper you, how does he prosper you? By sending his word. Just ask for the word. Because it prospers in the thing where into he sends it. There's a believer saying, prosper me. I'm praying for prosperity. You will not walk in prosperity. Because you got it all wrong, mister. You're supposed to understand this. He says when he sends his word, listen. It accomplishes that which he sends it to do. And it prospers in the thing that he sends it. It prospers in the thing that he sends it. So any man that is struggling to walk or live a prosperous life in Christ, it is because he has not either, if he's born again, understood the word of God that is inside him. Or if he's not yet born again, he needs the word inside his spirit. That's all. Because once the word of God is in you, it prospers. He says you shall meditate on this word day and night. It shall not depart from your mouth that thou mayest observe to do the things that are written therein. He says, then shall you make your way what? Joshua. Prosperous and have good success. Good success. Untainted success. Unfeigned success. Unworldly success. Godly success. He says, your way shall be made prosperous. Once you know how to keep the word of God in your mouth and you meditate there in day and night that you may observe to do according to the word as it is written. He says, you don't need to worry about the prosperity of your way. He says, it shall become prosperous. It shall become prosperous. The question is again, where do you begin from? In the world, we begin from weakness to strength. In the word, we begin from strength to deal with weakness. In the world, they begin from poverty. You're born with nothing into wealth. In the word, we begin from the wealth that we have in Jesus Christ and deal with the poverty. Somebody shout hallelujah. When your conversations are in heaven, when you start living from heaven, when you set your mind in heaven, when you keep it set from heaven, heaven your prayer life will change you will never ask God to heal you you will never ask God to heal you because from heaven you will see that your healing is already done and because of that experience even when pain comes in your body you'll thank God because you know that there is a provision for it look at two sick people one is saying, heal me, oh Lord. And another one is saying, thank you because I'm healed. They have the same sickness. They have the same pain. But one man's conversations are from heaven. And another man's conversation and vision is of the earth. How can we be the same? We cannot be the same. The word of God is from perfection. God didn't coin revelation from weakness. He did not coin revelation from poverty, from sickness. No, 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 no. That's a fallen nature. The world was not so from the beginning. Somebody shout amen. The world was not so from the beginning. It's just Satan that contradicted and confused the earth. But it was not so. The Bible says he did not create the world 
with emptiness, with confusion. But yet the earth was found to be wasted and without form because Satan did something right there. And your responsibility is to replenish, to heal things, to restore things. But from where? From the heavens. That's the pattern of prayer. That's the pattern of growth. That's the pattern of increase. That's the pattern of multiplication. That's the pattern of the glory that we have in Christ Jesus. Continue living from up here. Continue relating with the things that are up here. You might be seen as a proud person. You might start to appear to those who know you as unrealistic. But that is okay. The question is, do you want to have the results that the word so professes? Or you want to live a life of Christianity where you don't see the results of the life that is spoken of? You know, there are many believers who ask this question of why is it I've done everything, I've done everything, I've done everything. But I don't seem to see results because you'll be asked. <laughs> Come up thither. Come and start living up here. And start seeing the vastness of space, the vastness of opportunity, the vastness of greatness, the vastness of wisdom. Start living from there. I refuse to allow any present circumstance of my life to make me earthly in thought, to make me earthly in opinion, to make me earthly in perspective. He says, even though you are in the earth, you are not of the earth. Even though you are among them. He said you are not of them. Somebody shout hallelujah. He says my church is not of the world. This is Jesus speaking. He says my church is not of the world. Even as I'm not of the world. Yes. Let the world struggle. Yes it is true that the economies of the world are bleeding in this period. And that's true. <laughs> but heaven is not broke because COVID came. Somebody shout hallelujah. Heaven is not broke because they fired somebody at the job. You know, you're not broke because you're in a third world country. That's a fallen mindset. You're broke because you don't know yet what is available and where you really are. We are citizens of heaven. Somebody shout hallelujah. So we come and camp on the earth. Representative of a greater glory and atmosphere. Everything beautiful, everything perfect and mighty. In fact, the word dunamis is the word dunami, meaning the power of ability, the power of possibility. So he says, behold, I give you power. He means, behold, I give you the power of possibility. I give you the power of all ability. I give you the power of possibility. One time I was flying into Dubai and I saw the theme, eh? Dubai. They called it the spirit of possible. I said, what is Muslims? <laughs> they call it the spirit of possible. You, on the contrary, the believer, are that possibility. Somebody shout hallelujah. You are that possibility. God has given you the power of possible. That means nothing, nothing is impossible to you. There is nothing in the world you cannot fix. There is nothing in the world you cannot align. There is no problem in the world the believer cannot solve. Nothing is impossible to him that believeth. Could you imagine that kind of liberty? Could you imagine that kind of freedom in Christ? And just for a second, think back. What are the things that you can do? What are the things that he has given you the ability to do? It's all there. Because when you begin from the heavenlies, all things are possible. So you see them possible even before you start to pray. Cancer stage four. Yeah, all right. It's possible to reverse it. Because from where I come from, people don't die of cancer. From where I come from, people don't die of HIV. From where I come from, people don't die of sickness. From where I come from, there is no sickness. And so I come on the earth to impose that kingdom. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on the earth. The Bible says, as it is done in heaven. As it is done in heaven. As it is done in heaven. So where do you live? 
where do you really live? I want to speak to those people whose present circumstances have consumed them and convinced them, albeit in a most confused sense, that where they are at in life is from where they begin to relate with the world. If you're that kind of person, then you're confused in the order of things. Oh yes, the word is leading you from darkness to light, from weakness to strength, but it does not come from your weakness to take you to strength. It comes from strength to pick you from your weakness. If you want to pray the right way, if you want to apply the word of God the right way, begin from strength. Begin from health. Begin from wealth. Begin from victory. Begin from triumph. And then come and deal with the weakness. Even when you're praying, God is not emotional. He's revelational. That is why he skips Hagar crying. And then he hears the son, the lad, Ishmael crying. And he tells Hagar, quit crying for I have had the, 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 the tears of the lad. Why? Because the lad was a son or a seed of Abraham, faith. So he ignores the cry of the emotional woman and chooses to consider the cry of the spiritual seed of faith because God deals with men of faith than men which are emotional. Your faith will cry louder in the time of adversity than your physical tears. If you want to cry right, cry in faith. If you want to wail right, if you want to complain right, complain in faith. Complain in faith. You see that? Begin from what God has done. That's a man beginning from the heavens. Begin with what the word has said is that situation. What has the word of God said concerning your health? If the Bible says, by his stripes you were healed, regardless of how sick you are, never go to God for healing. That's wrong. That's wrong. Come from divine health and pick your body and kill the transactions of that body and take it to the place of health. That's a man who has learned the right way to pray. So it applies in your finances. So it applies in your marriage. So it applies in your career. So it applies to your business. So it applies to your ministry. And Jesus says, to this end came I into this world. To this end did I come. To this end was I born. And for this cause came I into this world. That I should be a witness and to the truth. So the end of witness of truth, it's to that end that he is born. He begins his journey from the end of the witness of truth. He's the Lamb of God which was slain before the foundations of the world. Hello. And so whatever happens in the physical, when they crucified Jesus thousands of years later, it already happened. Nothing is happening in your life has shocked God. And there is nothing that has happened in your life that was not provided for into salvation by God. Because he says, this is his word, that no temptation that has befallen you is uncommon. All temptation that befalls you, every test in the world is common to man. But the Bible says, but God is faithful. Who will not suffer you to be tempted above that which ye are able? Whatever has tested you began with God's weight of your ability. When he weighed your ability, the test came. If you could not handle it, it would not come. If you could not handle it, I repeat, it could not come. But it came because God weighed your ability, the dunami, your dunamis in you. And he says, uh -uh. regardless, I have to make you in a way that when I look at whatever will come your way, you'll have the ability to withstand Live from that place. Live from that place. One man sang and said, Turn your eyes upon 
Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. And the things of the earth will grow strangely deep in the light of his glory and grace. Help me quiet. Sing to your eyes. Look full in his wonderful face and the things of the earth will grow strength in the light of his glory. Now listen, I want to pray with you that your eyes will be set and kept on things above. Where the word of God is stationed in perfection. Where the word of God is stationed and appointed at its best stead. And you will see with your eyes that everything that has troubled you has an end. And that end is good. He says, I know the plans that I have toward you. Plans to make you prosper and not to harm you. The thoughts that I have towards you are of peace. He says, and not of evil. And he says, to give you an expected end. What is your expectation? He says that your expectation will not be cut short. Your expectation shall not be cut short. Because you have found wisdom for your soul. And it shall be your reward. And so I decree and I declare in the name of Jesus. That all is well with you. All is well with your family. All is well with your health. All is well with your visions. All is well with your dreams. All is well with your aspirations. All is well with your contentions. All is well with everything that concerns you. He says he shall perfect that which concerns you. I declare and I declare that from today you live from above. You think from above. Your conversations are from above. Your meditations are from above. Your plans and visions are from above. And upward your life is going to go. Only and forward. In Jesus name. And all saints said. If you're sick in your body. Receive your healing. Barren wombs I command you to open. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Finances, I command you to align. Ministries, I command you to grow. In the mighty name of Jesus. Blind eyes see, deaf ears hear. In the mighty name of Jesus. All sickness is healed in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. If you have never given your life to Christ, I want to give you an opportunity to receive him as your Lord and Savior. The Bible says there is no name under the earth that is given among men where we men can be saved by the name of Jesus. You just repeat these words after me. You say, Lord Jesus, I thank you because you shed your blood for me and you were raised for my glory. Thank you for taking my sin. Thank you for begetting me. And tonight, I receive you as my personal Lord and Savior who gave his life for me. Amen. The message you have just heard was brought to you by Fenero Ministries International. For more information, contact us on telephone number 41 466 
1-800-242-4291 or email us at funerocompala at gmail.com. You can also find us on the web at www.funero.org or better still, feel free to join us every Thursday for our weekly fellowships at UMA Multipurpose Hall from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. You can also catch the live stream at livestream.com slash Fenero. Fenero, make manifest. Thank you.